Lyme disease cases have soared nationwide 320% in the last 20 years. Experts say it's especially aggressive here in the capital region. So as the CDC looks at better ways to combat it, many folks who've been diagnosed with the disease say the real struggle is trying to get their insurance to cover their health care. CBS 6 investigative reporter Jennifer Lukey joins us now with The Real Deal. And Jen, mm -hmm. Lyme disease is so prevalent here. Why the pushback on insurance? Well, Cody, for years, the disease has been somewhat regional, obviously impacting mainly the Northeast, which means there haven't been a lot of big national studies into the best ways of treating it. Without those studies, that scientific proof, insurance companies aren't going to pay. Right now, if you catch it quick, normally the cost of testing and antibiotics is covered. But patients who have long-term symptoms end up paying thousands of dollars out of pocket. Meet the Pressers. Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. And now, your hosts. Welcome to Meet the Pressers. My name is Clint Macro, and this is my esteemed colleague, Matthew Mallory. Meet the Pressers is a safe place for trigger pressers to talk about guns, gear, gadgets, training, political activism, and also religion. But today we have a different show. Oftentimes we'll talk about hunting and sportsmen's rights and sportsmen's concerns. And today we're going to have a, a very different episode. Matt, would you introduce our special guest? You bet. Tim Kilborn. He actually, uh, we met for the first time when he came and took a handgun safety course from me. Uh, since then, he's uh, moved to Tennessee, got out of the commie state of New York, and uh, avid hunter, big game primarily. And we're going to talk about Lyme disease and all the things we can do to prevent them and uh, what happens if you have it and the turmoil you go through in that case. So, Tim, awesome to have you on, my friend. Thank you very much. This episode is brought to you by Mountain Man Medical. The right medical training and gear should be accessible to every American. Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Pressers is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, ASP, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. So going back to, uh, do you remember how long ago it was you took the, the class for me? Without me looking it up, I, I wouldn't know I teach so many of them. Oh, hell, I think it was three years ago. Okay. And did you have Lyme disease at the time when you took the class? Yes, I did. And when you first got it, it was when you were, you said you don't, you don't remember when it happened, how you got it. I have no idea. I have no clue. It well, could have been a time in my life that I could have been bit by a tick and gotten it. Now, most of the time, it, 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 you, people will acquire or get Lyme disease from uh, its ticks, but when they're hunting or they're just hiking, walking in the woods, those are the most primary ways, right? You guys, I mean, that, that's the most you've heard of in your own yard um i mean they can they travel on animals and uh obviously animals run rabid so you know deer you find them on you find them on deer all the time yes there's a deer tick there's a wood there's a wood tick um there's multiple variations of ticks um, but uh the deer tick is the one that i believe is known to carry lyme disease more so than others yeah yeah that's definitely true. And, and oftentimes, but not always, oftentimes people will get that telltale kind of bullseye looking rash, but that's not, that's not a guarantee. So you could be bit and not have the rash, but still get Lyme disease. Well, it's about 50 to 60% that people get that rash. Um, some people don't get the flu symptoms. Um, it, it, it depends. You're susceptible to all kinds of autoimmune diseases once you have late stage Lyme disease. Early stages, um, generally, you get your uh, doxycycline and you take, you take your, uh, your run for, uh, for the antibiotics and it's gone. Um, if it doesn't get treated within a certain period of time, you get late stage Lyme disease, which then it's long term. Um, chances of getting rid of it are very slim. 
we had that conversation yesterday, actually, because <clears throat> as, as you know, Tim and, and Clint as well, um, we had our daughter tested. We, we think she got it from the dog because we all, we all went for a walk in our backyard. We came back and, you know, we all pet the dog. The dogs come in the house. We don't check the dogs for ticks. We check each other for ticks, but we don't check the dog. Um, so we think maybe she was just hugging the dog, but she had one on the top of her head. Um, she woke up in the middle of the night saying you know something was bugging her so we looked and it was a tick so at two in the morning i was using the tick tornado to, to pull a tick out of her head and then we used tick check spent a 100 bucks sent that off and rushed and got it uh, got the test results back that it was positive so we're uh, now we're in the that stage of we don't know she doesn't have the rash she doesn't have a fever but like you said 50 60 percent you don't need to have the rash or the fever the bullseye etc so we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna have her get the shot no matter what it, what it costs, we're going to ever get the, uh, you know, the treatment, I should say. Uh, usually they run uh, doxycycline, uh, blue pill. Uh, for children, I think it's once a day uh, for 14 to 21 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my son had it uh, a couple years ago. He actually got a bite, and we thought he had a spider bite. It, it looked very similar. You know, everyone goes online and looks on the interweb and stuff. The bite actually looks similar to a brown recluse bite. Huh. It was infected and it was really starting to spread. The day he got bit, actually, he started to feel sick and he actually threw up. And they thought that it might have been a bug bite and they weren't sure and it went a couple of days, but it ended up being Lyme disease. And, and so, uh, you know, he mm. went through the heavy regimen of, of uh, doxycycline. And that seemed to take care of the situation. But I had it actually when I was a kid. I was one of the first documented cases in Pennsylvania back in the late 1980s. And I went at least a year before they diagnosed it as Lyme disease. Um, they said I had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which was actually one of the side effects of having it. And uh, I mean, it, I went one summer there, man, my knuckles swelled up in my hands, through my joints. I think every joint in my body swelled up at one point in time. And uh, it wasn't a very fun summer because I still went out and ran around the woods. But my mom saw a thing on, on like 2020 or one of those news shows that talked about the bullseye rash. And she recalled me having that at one point. And it was the, you know, the stereotypical bullseye rash. And we went in and got checked and my titer count was like off the charts. And then they started treating me for it. But I, I haven't had any long-term effects that I'm aware of. Uh, luckily, you know, I know some people it's been pretty debilitating. My eyesight got pretty bad that year. Uh, but aside from that, knock on wood, I haven't had any other complications that I can I can report. You said uh, before we started rolling that you think you had it for quite a while before it was diagnosed. Uh, when were you first diagnosed? It took a while to get diagnosed. I was diagnosed. I mean, I, I came up positive for Lyme. Uh, when I started having symptoms, the neurological symptoms, and uh, they gave me a run of 30, uh, 30 days of doxycycline, and uh, they said I should be gone, and they never retested me. But see, there's an underlying thing where the CDC does not recognize late-stage Lyme disease. So there is no treatments out there that are known by and covered by, you know, recognized by the FDA. Um, insurance companies do not pay for anything with late stage Lyme disease. Um, and a lot of doctors won't do anything with it because of that. Um, there's not a lot of research going on out there. Um, and, you know, not funded. So, uh, so an actual cure, an actual um, treatment is unknown for late stage. <clears throat> now, they say you have antibiotics, you could get pick line. Um, there's a bunch of other treatments out there that you can do. Um, most people that have late stage are stuck with it for the rest of their life. And uh, they'll have flare ups and periodically they got to go in and get some kind of a treatment. Now with my case, uh, I went after the 30 days of doxy, I went in, uh, I was seeing neurologists, infectious disease, rheumatoid arthritis doctors, all the way down the line. And it was probably a little over a year I dealt with that. And they denied the fact that I had Lyme disease. Hmm. They would not admit it. They would not diagnose me. And uh, the damage was being done. I mean, I had just about every symptom for every autoimmune disease. 
symptoms like Parkinson's. Uh, I was shaking all the time, uh, pain all the way through my whole entire body. I finally started paying out of pocket to go to doctors in the Catskills. And uh, this is when I lived in New York, obviously. Um, and it's very expensive to go to them doctors because they have no funding, insurance doesn't pay. And uh, they did blood work and they found that I was still infected with Lyme disease as well as some of the co-infections that come along with it. Uh, I had six different veins. Wow. And so the doctor himself said that as far along as I was in the stages and, and uh, how it was affecting me, uh, he thinks I had it for about four years or more prior to being diagnosed by him. Now, the doctors before that, you told them that you thought it was Lyme disease and they, and they just said, no, it's not. We're not even going to test you for it. Well, nothing made sense because everything I got tested for was negative. Everything. My you, blood, I was in perfect shape. Um, I always went to the gym, um, always active. Uh, it didn't make sense. All my blood work was all normal. Um, everything else was normal, but the symptoms were still there. You, you'd think with all the, all the people that get Lyme disease or at least get ticks on them and how prevalent ticks are and the chances of it, that that would be in the blood work. Like they would test for that automatically. Like yeah, but they don't recognize else. it. So therefore, if they test for it, he's positive and they submit it to insurance, they won't get their money back from the insurance company. So they don't spend the extra. Yeah. So rather than if they don't, then they can bill for other things, right? It's all about the money, boys. And then uh, basically all they did is they kept on giving me medications to mask my symptoms. That's all they did. They would not diagnose me with anything. And they just kept on running test after test after test, checking for MS, Parkinson's, um, Huntington's. I mean, they, they did a test for just about every autoimmune disease out there. And uh, everything came back negative. So I, I talked to a, a room of... Uh, infectious disease doctor and he actually came in his office and he looked me in the eye and he says i will not diagnose you with lyme disease hmm. basically he was admitting that he knew i had lyme disease but he would not diagnose me no you you had mentioned uh, on the phone when we talked the other day um as far as i made i made the comment that the government invented lyme you know the lyme disease and and you gave some good statistics on that because obviously you've researched researched a lot more than I have because you're living it. Well, the only other country that has a mass spread of Lyme disease is Germany. Um, I just started doing research and found out that uh, in World War II there was a biochemist that actually produced Lyme disease. Whether it's actually natural, I don't know, but they started using it as a uh, uh, possible biological warfare. Now, in World War II, that biochemist was captured by the U.S. and brought to Plum Island. Now, Plum Island is a test site for our military, and it's between Long Island and Connecticut. Hmm. And at some point, um, a tick or something transferred the Lyme disease to mainland which Lyme, Connecticut was the very first case of Lyme disease. That's why it's called Lyme disease. Um, and it's branched off from there. And that's why it's mostly in the Northeast. And it's been spreading from obviously down there, Connecticut, Long Island and whatnot down that way. Um, and it wasn't known to be in the rest of the country. And I believe that, don't mark my words, but I believe it was 1972 give or take a few years when uh, the very first case was found. This is Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Macro. I want to thank them for the opportunity to share with you. I'm Frank Tate. I'm the NRA training counselor who is running as a reform candidate for the NRA board of directors. I'm the one that's advocating for transparency, accountability, a smaller board, term limits for board members, and new leadership. I ran last year, I got 55,000 votes, but I still came in last. Tried running for the 2021 election, and the nitpickers in the nominating committee have disqualified 227 of my signatures, so I need to run as a write-in candidate, and this is where I need your help. If you're looking for reform at the NRA, when you get your ballot, if you're a voting member, I need you to ignore the front of the page 
because everybody on that ballot, with one exception, is part of the old guard supporting Wayne. And I need you to fill in the circle with the top line, put my name in there, Frank C. Tate. Got to spell it correctly, T-A-I-T, or the nitpickers will disqualify it. And again, my address, uh, which is Wayne, Pennsylvania. So if you can put that on the back and then submit your ballot, um, that's what I need to get on to get on the board. Um, I figure I'm going to need 80,000 votes to be on the board. And so I need 80,000 voting members to stand up and put me in as a write-in candidate. Meet the pressers. No matter what you do, there's a possibility of getting a tick. They're so small. And like I said before, there's a nymph stage where it, it's like the size of a pinhead. Yeah. And even know it's in you. Yeah, I had two of my clients that had Lyme disease, and, and one of them, it affected him really, really negatively, neurologically speaking. Like, he had a hard time really concentrating and, and being in a full day long class. And, and if he was on his feet for a long time, he would get exhausted. Uh, he ended up out of his own pocket, just like you, going to a, a doctor where they did, they did uh, some DNA treatment. And it was pretty, uh, pretty radical stuff. But uh, I wish I knew a little more about it to comment, but it was, it was definitely, they took DNA from him and they did something with the DNA and then re-injected it. And what it did was it helped to reduce and eliminate the, the Lyme that was in him. He spent a lot of money on that, but he's a lot better now too. So I don't know if he's hundred percent cured, but as, as you said before, a lot of the, the treatments that are out there are not recognized by you know, the, the insurance company doctor. And so if folks want to get relief on this, they have to kind of go out and do it on their own. I know another person that had it that just changed their diet and, and really looked at changing, like getting rid of gluten and things like that. And it helped it. I, I don't think it got rid of it, but it definitely helped. Well, now my treatment plans that I could possibly get to get rid of it or get it under control were out of reach financially. Um, I mean, you're spending tens of thousands of dollars for treatments and nothing being said that it was completely 100% getting rid of the Lyme disease. But like I said, there's co-infections that come along with it. And now a lot of people don't know that. Now, the co-infections could be a lot worse than just the Lyme disease itself. You might be able to get rid of the Lyme disease, but those co-infections that come along with it are the, the ones that are dead but that's that's what's doing the damage um it's kind of uh, like it's kind of like hiv aids right when you get that a lot of people die from pneumonia or other other things because it weakens the immune system or people that get covid and die in a car wreck <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's not funny literally uh what i did is i went holistic and i went diet change and I went with uh, dietary supplements, surpluses, and, and heavy antibiotics for five months. Um, this is the was, first time. Yeah, I was, I was completely, I mean, I thought I was completely healed back to regular life after seven months. And I mean, I did all my own physical therapy, occupational therapy. I couldn't talk back then. Uh, I had a lot of uh, stuttering and, and a lot of brain fog and issues. And, uh, I had to do all that on my own. It was out of reach financially because, like I said, insurance companies do not cover anything for Lyme disease. But now, uh, last, about six months ago, I started getting bad again. Um, symptoms started coming back, started getting brain fog here and there, um, memory loss, um, struggling with uh, the pain, the joint pain. That's never gone away. Um, that's the one thing that stuck with me all this time. I don't know what it's like to not be in pain for the last six years. Hmm. Um, but I did come across a treatment that is supposed to get rid of it completely. But like I said before, it's out of reach financially. But it's something I'm trying. And I'm, uh, I'm trying my hardest to try and uh, come up with the money here and there without screwing up my daily life and uh, finances. It's an eight week, uh, eight week treatment. And it's, uh, for the first, first four weeks, every time I go in once a week, it's $2,100 every time I walk in the door. And, um, for the last 
part of the treatment, it's twenty eight hundred dollars every day that I go in. So uh, it it drives me nuts that they wouldn't cover this though. I mean, I'm, I just researched. I, lo I looked online a little bit as far as the, you know, them not covering it, and they're not obligated to cover it because of. I'm still reading, like trying to find out why they can't cover it, why they're not obligated to cover it. It makes no sense. They don't recognize late stage Lyme disease as a disease. So everybody gets away with doing what they want. That's insane. Yeah. But this treatment is actually a treatment for many things. Um, it's newer treatment. It's called ozone UVA uh, radiation treatment. And, um, and basically what they do is they clean your blood. They ramp it up with uh, vitamins, minerals, and oxygen 3, O3, and uh, put it back into your body. And what it does is it kills anything, any of those um, Lyme disease and all the um, co-infections that came along with it as well as anything else that's not supposed to be in your body. It kills it off and gets rid of it out of your body. But it also regenerates all your cells that have been damaged. So it's basically amazing. getting a whole new interior body. It's amazing. And it's also good for cancer and, and, uh, and so many other things. Uh, auto diseases, fibromyalgia, I mean, all the way down the line. And, uh, and this is the twenty twenty one hundred dollars every time you walk in the door. That's what that is. Yes, and it's not FDA approved because obviously it's not pharmaceutical. So mm. you know how they are in each other's pockets. Yeah. <laughs> well, so that's actually you're making your own blood into a drug to get rid of. I mean, and they do heavy metal treatment too. Any heavy metals that you have in your body, they can get rid of that too. It purifies your whole entire body. Hmm. But it also puts the cells that have been damaged. So it's kind of like uh, donating platelets, right? Is that kind of the system where you sit down, you get hooked up to a machine, they're, they're running the, your blood through a cycle, kind of like doing a, a dialysis. Yeah. yeah, dialysis. Yes, it's very similar to that. Uh, what they do is they pull blood out of you and uh, it ends up in a bottle that hangs up. And then it, it, when they draw it out, it goes through the machine. It goes through, a, uh, it wraps around um, UVA uh, light inside the machine. It goes back up into the bottle. They um, put the uh, vitamins, minerals, and uh, the O3 oxygen into the bottle. And then they send it right back through the UVA light again and then put it back into your body. Now, they do uh, different passes. They do it up to 10 different times all at once at one, at one visit. <clears throat> but uh, that's not even the real treatment. I'm just going in for the, for the ozone and the UVA. Um, the, the other parts of it are the, are the, ex, are the expense. Um, and that's supposed to start next week, but the funds are not looking good. So <laughs> I don't, I might have to just stay with what I'm doing right now, just so that way, at least I'm getting the treatment because they said, once you go past about three weeks, you kind of got to go backwards with it and start over with your, with your regimen. So the, one of the things you had mentioned was changing diet. What, what were some of the things that you did that kind of helped maintain or at least help maybe give you a little bit of relief with the diet change? I don't wish that diet on anybody. <laughs> it's uh, no gluten, no dairy, zero sugar, because actually the Lyme disease and any bacteria infections or anything that live off of sugar. So you got to cut sugar out completely. I mean, you cannot have anything that is store bought pretty much. At all. Preservative, no preservatives, no additives, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sounds like paleo. Oh, it, it was terrible. <laughs> But there were some things that I had to have every day, like beets. I had to have beets every day. Really? Yeah. High in uh, antioxidants and stuff, right? Yep. And uh, natural uh, antibiotics like uh, like sauerkraut and, and stuff of that sort. Um, I had to have uh, uh, bone stock. Mm. Um, they wanted me to drink uh, one cup in the morning, one cup in the afternoon. 
of just straight bone broth. Hmm. And uh, I made it work. I mean, it took a few months, but I mean, I started seeing a difference after three months and uh, <clears throat> it actually got me back on my feet and got me back moving again. I was being productive. I was actually able to go back to work. And uh, up until just recently and, and having my issues that I have now, um, I was doing great. But now I, I don't know. I can't determine if what what's going on as far as my how elevated it is, what stage I'm at. What are the stages? Uh, stage one, obviously, is, <clears throat> you know, bullseye rash, flu-like symptoms, uh, joint pain, uh, fatigue. Um, and then it just gradually, it, it goes up in levels as far as how severe uh, the neurological symptoms, um, uh, similar to most autoimmune diseases. Um, I mean, like you get the shakes, um, brain fog. Uh, your, your cognitive thinking and everything like that just goes right down the tubes. Um, memory loss. Um, I had one. I had trouble talking. I, I had. I couldn't talk. Um, I had trouble walking. Um, the pain is so ridiculous. I mean, there was days I was in a fetal position on the floor, crying my eyes out because there's nothing you can take for the pain because it's neurological. Um, like fibromyalgia, our, our uh, middle daughter has fibromyalgia. Yeah. Oh, the pain is just ridiculous. I still don't know what it's like to not be in pain, but I've gotten used to it over the years. Yeah. So, you know, it's there. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, it does damage to your brain once it's neurological and it enters, uh, passes the brain barrier. Um, it can get into your heart, which is one issue that I'm having right now. Um, that's very rare. Only about 5% of people actually get Lyme carditis, what it's called. And it does damage to the inner liner of your heart. Um, and also the electrical nodes that are in your heart that actually make your heart beat. I mean, there's, there's people that are bedridden out there for the rest of their life because they can't get, they're getting refused for anything that they have going on. And basically they just give you like, they, like me, they gave me anti-tremor meds from my tremors. They gave me uh, a couple other different medications for neuro, neurological um, pain, um, like Neurontin and, and whatnot. And uh, all it is is just masking the symptoms. It's not taking care of the issue, but they wouldn't even diagnose me with anything because they couldn't come up with anything. So and most people know that fibromyalgia is a cop-out disease because they can't figure out what it is. Well, nine times out of 10, I guarantee you, it's probably Lyme disease. But like I said, insurance companies don't pay for anything with Lyme disease. So it's all out of pocket. So that's why there's so many people out there that are suffering from Lyme disease. And most doctors, will diagnose you with fibromyalgia because they will not diagnose you with late, late stage Lyme disease. So you had to go outside of the traditional doctor system and pay extra out of your pocket to have somebody else diagnose you with it because nobody in the system would, would admit it or would diagnose you with it, even though they might have known inside their head. Well, like I said before, the infectious disease doctor actually told me, he said, I will not diagnose you with it. He was basically admitting that he had it. you got you got late stage Lyme disease, but I'm not going to diagnose you. But from what I understand is, uh, I don't know how it would go, but the uh, the CDC actually revoked a couple of doctors' licenses to practice because they were diagnosing so many people with Lyme disease. Really? Yeah, that's how serious this this whole thing is with. You know, between the CDC and the FDA and uh, and treatments and, uh, and kind of makes you go back and think that maybe it is a, a government conspiracy, government cover up or something, because we know it's there. We know it's something that's out there. You know, it's fact that we get it right. So why don't why don't you why wouldn't you admit it? Why wouldn't you do something to treat it? What would be some advice you would give someone uh, as far as preventative measures if they, you know, to avoid potentially getting 
Lyme disease, but also if they think that they have it or if they see the bullseye rash or if they find a tick, what would you suggest that they do? Uh, I would say the first thing would be to go to the doctor and say, I got bit by a tick and get on antibiotics regardless. Because like I said, you might, Lyme disease is not the only thing that ticks will, will, will give you. There's so many other co-infections that come along with Lyme disease. What you want to do is you want to get everything cleaned out of you before it does its damage or it takes effect. And the bad thing about Lyme disease is that after it's in your body for a period of time, it'll mask itself to make it look like it's supposed to be in your body. So your body does not build up the antibodies to sure. fight off anymore. So basically it hides itself in your body and it just stays there. Most doctors will, will give you a script of doxy right away. I heard that they don't even test you anymore. They just give you the doxy. Yeah. Well, Tim, we appreciate uh, all the information that you've given us and our viewers, and we wish you the best of luck and hope that you find some relief with this problem. Uh, how can people contact you and, and donate to your GoFundMe account? Um, if anybody would like to contact me, uh, it's under my name, Tim Kilborn on Facebook. Um, the, uh, the GoFundMe, I believe, is under my name. Uh, Lisa put it together for me and started the GoFundMe. Um, I just know that it's been getting shared around on Facebook and, and whatnot. Um, but, uh, but the other side of this, too, is uh, this is the first time that somebody with my condition is getting treated uh, with this treatment. So it's also like a medical breakthrough. If this works 100%, um, this is going to be available to anybody to, uh, to be able to get, uh, get rid of the Lyme disease and the co-infections that they have. But, uh, I mean, it, like I said, it's an all-around like a cure-all. Um, so, I mean, I, I suggest it for anybody to check it out. It's called ozone VA treatment. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff that they fracked out of, out of the treatment as well. So, um, but it's an up and coming thing. It's not approved by the FDA, but it does work. I talked to a people that were in there getting treatment at the same time I was, and they had already been there for a few months and, uh, and they feel back to hundred percent, but they're going to finish out the treatment to make sure that it's gone. But, uh, well, we hope the same thing happens for you, my friend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm hoping so. It was good uh, Good seeing you. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. Stay warm down there in Tennessee. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. There's lots of sponsors that make this show possible, like Mountain Man Medical. Check them out and give them your business. This episode is brought to you by Mountain Man Medical. The right medical training and gear should be accessible to every American. Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Pressers is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, ASP, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Thanks for watching or listening to our show. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share. Click that little bell thingy so you know when the next episode's uploaded. Support us on Patreon. Come to one of our classes. Host us to come to you and do one of our classes at your location. And until next time, adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers. 